Can I, can I ask to start with who, what sort of experience people have? Who has experience in, uh, in other programming languages other than Lua? Is that everyone? Does anyone not have experience in other programming languages? Mas. Oh. Right, that's good. I can skip the first part of my talk then, because I've kind of split it into, into if you don't know how to program and if you do know how to program, because <laughs> those two audiences are very, very different things. Uh, so, okay, that, that's great. Um, so, yeah, I can talk to talk about Lua for programmers, which, which you all are, excellent. Um, okay, so, Lua, uh, Let's just start with, uh, with the lexical uh, part of Lua. Com comments in Lua start with two dashes. It, they're kind of like SQL. E everything in Lua seems to be kind of like some other language, although not any particular language. Like the, there's no one language that is like Lua, but uh, comments are kind of like SQL. You can make long comments over multiple lines uh, using uh, double square brackets. Um, Line breaks are ignored. Uh, it's a bit like JavaScript in that you can use semicolons to terminate statements, but you don't have to. Uh, but unlike JavaScript, most authors do not use semicolons. Um, data types are pretty standard. We have um, nil numbers, uh, strings, uh, boolean. There's only one type of numbers. Um, that is a, a floating point number. Um, and the strings are not Unicode, but 8-bit clean, so they're in PHP. Function, yeah, go ahead, Brandon. Did you want to say something? Functions in Lua are first-class values, similar to in, uh, in PHP, in, sorry, in JavaScript and other functional languages. Uh, they can, um, a fairly unusual feature, they can return multiple values. So you just use return and then a, a list of values that it's going to return. The um, multiple return values are not bundled into a data type. They only really exist in the one statement that you, you're calling the function. So you then have to, to uh, bundle them into a list if you want to have, in, into a, a table if you, need to, if you want to keep them. And you can have um, anonymous functions pretty much with the same syntax as in JavaScript just by omitting the function name. Since strings are 8-bit clean, do they handle UTF-8? Yeah. Well, we would imagine that there would be UTF-8 in them, in, in uh, MediaWiki, since everything in MediaWiki is UTF-8. Like the string functions UTF-8 here? They do deal with bytes. So um, we are considering some sort of UTF-8 handling library. Um, but the details of that aren't finalized yet. But it will probably look similar to the string library, the native string library in Lua. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, MediaWiki has a lot of code, uh, PHP code, to deal with 8-bit clean UTF-8 strings. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we have a precedent to follow there. Tables are, are pretty much the only structured data type in, in Lua. They're implemented as a hash table. They're used for object-oriented programming, so they're kind of like an array and kind of like an object. Um, the literal syntax, array literal syntax, is similar to in JavaScript, where you use, you use braces. Um, uh, the, the name is, is the, a, a string name, um, or you can omit the name to get it numbered keys. And uh, exactly like in JavaScript, you can access them either with a dot syntax, which is syntactic sugar for the, the following uh, with square brackets and, a, and an expression. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a really excellent feature about Lua in that you can use a table or a function as the key to an array. Um, that lets you do some, some useful things that you can't really do in, in a lot of other languages. You certainly can't do in PHP. Um, so thanks for that. These are Lua's operators. 
not, no big surprises there, I guess. Uh, not equals is, is with a tilde instead of an exclamation mark, uh, unlike most languages. But every language has to have its quirks, right? You, you have to have a, a certain number of quirks in every language. So concatenation with two dots, length, length of a table or length of a string is with a hash. Uh, logical are, are spelt out with words and or not. Uh, it has an exponentiation operator, uh, you know, to find one number to the power of another. And uh, all those ones at the bottom have the usual meanings that you would find in other programming languages. That's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal, plus, minus, times, divide, modulo. So they all have their usual meanings. Um, here are some things which are different in Lua than some other languages. There are no assignment operators, uh, like plus equals. You have to do, it's a bit like in basic, you have to do A equals A plus B, right? Uh, even plain equals uh, assignment is not really an operator. You can't, uh, you can't take the value of an assignment operation in Lua. It's, it's really a whole statement. There are no bitwise operators. That's been the source of concern for, for some Lua users. But So there are a number of bit libraries. And uh, in Lua 5.2, there's a native bit library, which you can use to do bitwise operations. Although I don't think we do many bitwise operations on, on, on Wikipedia, in Wikipedia templates. So maybe that won't be such a concern for us. And there's no uh, ternary question mark colon operator, which I'm entirely happy about. Uh, that's, that's not one of my favorite things in, in PHP or JavaScript. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm quite happy with if, then, else. Is what logic? Shortcut, yeah. Shortcut evaluation does work. Um, so this is about assignment. Um, like I was just saying, basic, it, like basic, assignment is a complete statement. Um, you can assign multiple values in a single assignment statement um, by using a comma separated list on each side of the equals sign. When a function returns multiple values, you can assign it to, the, to multiple variables. At each, uh, each return value in turn is, is assigned to the, uh, to the subsequent return values. Uh, if you write local at the start of a, an assignment, it declares local variables uh, with, the, with the, those names. But uh, this is a, a, a pitfall for, um, for developers of other languages uh, to try to write uh, a C style um, uh, variable declaration, which is just a pass error in Lua. Yeah, that's a pass error. So, what is it? Control structures, um, uh, all of them end in, in the word end. Uh, so you don't, it, it's not like uh, in shell script or in, uh, in basic where everything seems to end with a different thing or, or even in Python, uh, everything ends with end. So that's kind of useful to, understand, to, to remember, except for repeat, um, which is the post condition loop. You have to do repeat until not condition. Yeah, that's the only that's the only post condition loop. Um, if statement um, quite similar to, to to basic, they use the word then um, before each one. Um, there's no switch in Lua, so this is what you would use to to simulate a switch. Uh, alternatively, you can make a table and you can check if the key exists, you know, same as you would in any other language. Um, loops, uh, the, uh, the top one there is a numeric for loop. So you use an equal sign for a numeric for loop to, do, to uh, iterate over a, a range in numbers uh, in sorry, integers. Sorry, I started to interrupt too. I just want to let you know we are going to turn off the batch feed. So we're trying to make better. Thanks. If you're not going to do that, the noise is still in the Thank you. So uh, numeric four, you use an equal sign, and um, you can also include a third uh, step parameter there, much like in basic. Um, and the generic four, um, you use the keyword in 
uh, and the, the iterator there is a function which, which uh, when called, each time you call it, it returns the, uh, like a list of the, the next values. But um, there are a couple of standard iterators in Lua called pairs and ipairs, which are, uh, which are the only iterators you really need at a, at a basic level of programming. Um, and the, the index variable declared here, the i in these two, um, is uh, local to the loop, so it doesn't exist after the loop exits. Can you? It'll no. It'll um. It'll create a new local variable which overrides the the one in the, the closing scope. Yeah, you would have to assign it to a a, 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 a variable in the closing scope. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so to do a for each loop, I, I don't know if we have an example, but it's, um, yeah, you use, a, a, you use pairs. I, I can type it out if you like. Um, you just go for k comma v pairs some table, right? Um, so that's not the, uh, Best color scheme, but um, that's that's how it's done. That's how you iterate over over a table of key value pairs, and if you change this to i pairs instead, uh, it does it over the integers one, two, three, four, five uh, that exist in the table. Right. Uh, variables have lexical scoping, which if you're familiar with JavaScript, you'll know what that means. Um, it means that, um, that the, um, the variables that the, the code can see are basically the variables which are declared in, in, closing, uh, in closing control structures, whether functions or, uh, or um, loops or, or whatever. Um, an unset variable is the same as a nil variable, a variable with nil in it. Um, so to delete a variable, you just set it to nil. And no error is raised. If you try to access an undefined variable, it will just give you nil. Um, although you, there, are, there is a hack on, on luausers.org if you're interested to, uh, to make it raise an error by overriding the meta method of the global table. Um, to do object-oriented programming, it's a similar situation to JavaScript where there's a wide variety of uh, syntaxes, ways to put a group of functions into a table indexed by the, the method name. Um, you can implement private member variables in the same way as JavaScript uh, by making them local variables of a function that returns a, a closure, which is the object. Um, when you call a method uh, statically, like, like without a, a self parameter, it's called self in, in Lua rather than this. Um, when you call a, a method statically, you use a dot. And when you call a method uh, non-statically, you use a colon, which, which will pass in uh, an, explicit, uh, uh, a, uh, an implicit self parameter as the first parameter to that function. I just say dot function self. Yeah, you can if you like. If you can use um, you can use the dot syntax and pass in an explicit self. Um, but we have colon syntax to make that a bit simpler. To what? Um, it's uh, it's like a, an arrow operator. It's not like a apply or call, I don't think, but um, it, um, if I can just um, give you, yeah. It does it in the loop state itself, it has no function whatsoever. It's, it's just for you as a developer and internally there's nothing different between calling dot function self or object or goal function. 
function. Right. And you can, uh, you can declare functions either with a dot or with a colon. If you use a colon, there's an implicit self-parameter as the, the first uh, formal parameter to the function. Um, That's correct. That's correct. So, So this is an example of creating an object in Lua it, in one particular uh, style. Um, so we've just got a factory function which isn't actually part of the class. Um, and uh, so we, uh, we create a table uh, which will, will become the object. Um, then we uh, create a closure method um, which will return a private variable and the private variable is in the enclosing scope. Um, and then uh, we return the, the object that we just created, which will contain this get private uh, method. So does that make sense to everyone? I'll take that as a yes. Right. Uh, meta tables. Um, each, uh, each table can have an attached meta table, uh, and it provides operator overloading. So. Uh, uh, similar to the C++ feature, um, except that it's not quite as flexible because you, you can only override operators on tables. Um, the, uh, the index meta table entry in particular, you can override uh, it, the um, fetching a, an element of a table, um, which is handy for various things such as object inheritance, and prototype-based OOP. So you can have um, you can have a table which has certain overridden methods, and then has an index uh, entry which points back to its parent class. So when the method doesn't exist in the child class, it'll automatically check the parent class for that same method. That, that's how. Uh, and if, if you want the, the full details of that, I, I don't expect someone to memorize all of the details off this slide, but. But uh, the programming in Lua book is really the, the best source of, of this information. Okay, so I'm going to talk now about the, the MediaWiki Lua interface, so the environment uh, that, that MediaWiki presents to, to Lua scripts that run under it. Um, before I get started on that, are there any more questions on Lua syntax? Um, so all of the Lua code in MediaWiki will be in a new namespace called module. Um, and there'll be a code editor provided in that module based on the ACE JavaScript code editor. Uh, it has automatic indent indenting and it has syntax highlighting. You can press tab without it going to the summary, so it's, it's uh, better than a, than a plain text field. Um, to invoke a, a function in a module, you use this hash invoke parser function on a wiki page. Um, so hash invoke has, um, has the, the module name is the first parameter, the function name, uh, and then uh, the arguments can be either numbered arguments or named arguments, as in a, a template invocation. Yes. Yes. All the arguments are strings. Okay. Uh, so any other questions on that? <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, that was in the first part that I, I skipped. There's um, a test installation up at screwbunto.wmflabs.org. I'll just uh, skip to that slide, actually. So, uh, so there's the URL. Um, yeah. 
S-C-R-I-B-U-N-T-A. So if you create an account there, then you can uh, you can create module pages and and um, yeah, try it out. And there's the boilerplate code there for you at the top uh, for creating a module. That's what we'd expect. We'd expect to, uh, this hash invoke to be mostly used from meta templates or from, from templates generally, not, not from uh, articles. So basically, what I expect is happening is that every, everything that would be exposed to UI and not exposed to the templates to variables from passwords, you end up being involved first to a meta template, then to an involved template, and then to PHP. So yeah. I think that the most typical use for many of the UI templates will actually be strictly read before it goes to articles. So yeah, and you'll see that in the uh, the frame interface that we've anticipated that use case, and we actually provide access, direct access to the arguments of the wrapper template. Um, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, let me say first that uh, that you don't have uh, share a shared global namespace between hash and vote calls. Um, that's mainly to um, to keep our options open in terms of parser implementation. Uh, Gabriel Vicker, in particular, is currently working on a multi-threaded parser, you know, which will expand all these different hash and vote tags in parallel. So. You don't want to have one depending on the state established by the previous one. Um, only uh, only caches are shared, so th which are pretty much transparent to the user. Okay. Um, uh, so a module is a Lua chunk. Uh, that's a Lua terminology for just some some code that's not inside a function or or is inside a function even. Um, a, a Lua chunk that returns an export table. Uh, I showed you the boilerplate for that earlier. Um, you can use a require function to, uh, to fetch the export table of other modules while you're actually in Lua. You don't have to go back through the parser. And require is not isolated. So you can use require to define global variables, which allows us to use, um, to use code just copied straight from the web. Like the, the vast bulk of Lua code can just be copied into the module namespace and will just work. Um, uh, the syntax of the require function is the same uh, as uh, r pretty much the same as in um, as in standard Lua, and there's a package library which is quite similar to the the one in Lua 5.1 in the reference manual. Um, the uh, functions that you export in a module return a, a wiki text string. If for some reason you return multiple values, they'll be concatenated. Um, and if you return a table or some other non-string value, then that'll be converted to string by the usual uh, uh, Lua mechanisms. Um, and if you want to have like some sort of um, uh, wrapper for a, for a string, maybe we'll have like a Unicode object or something like that that will wrap UTF-8 values. Um, you can you can. Uh, have a meta table entry called to string, uh, which will uh, convert that to a string. So you just be able to return such such objects directly. Um, to access arguments within um, within the exported functions, there's a, a single argument passed to the function called frame. The frame has an element called args and uh, args is, is a like a pseudo table which which um, allows you to fetch the uh, the named parameters and the numbered parameters to the to the function 
Um, because args is not really a real, ta a real table with the arguments in it, uh, we provide argument pairs, which is an iterator, um, allowing you to iterate all over all of the, uh, the arguments passed to the function. So there's some sample code there to show you how to do that. And as I was saying earlier, we also provide get parent. That's, that's frame colon get parent, which allows you to, to access the parent frame, which is the uh, template which called hash invoke. So that means that um, instead of the, the rabbit templates that Zoki was talking about, um, having like a huge list of, uh, of parameter mappings, right? That which will have you know some costs in terms of pass time, uh, we can just have a very short uh, proxy invocation to to hash invoke and let uh, let Lua access those uh, those arguments directly. Yeah, that's right. It would have to be called from that particular template. Yeah, for that to work. Um, so yeah, you call frame call and get parent, and that just gives you another frame with which also has this args table and also has argument pairs and anything else that you want to do with it. We provide uh, wiki text preprocessing, so if you happen to want to expand a template from within Lua, you can do that by calling preprocess. Um, and. Uh, we also have a, a structured template invocation function called expand template, which allows you to pass in arguments directly without having them it reinterpreted by the parser. Like if you tried to, 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 cons to pass arguments to this template using this syntax, then you'd have a problem where if the argument contains a pipe character, then it would all break hardly. If it contains a double brace, it would all break. So by passing it in using this, this uh, structured template invocation, uh, you avoid any kind of escaping issues. Oh, and I should also. Um, yes, well, yeah, you have to at least follow the, the rules of Lua syntax, yeah. Um, this, uh, the, the fact that there's a brace here, uh, I haven't mentioned that yet. That's, that's um, basically a shortcut for having a, a bracket and then a brace. So. Um, it passes a single argument to this function expand template, which is a table which has these two elements. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It'll have self, and then it'll have that table with title and args. Yeah. Um, you can, you can. Um, there's a depth limit. Okay. You can do, you can do um, loops like that if you like, but uh, eventually it will stop working and return an error. Yeah, maybe you tested it with before I rewrote the parser interface. Because in the new parser interface, I did put a depth limit in there. No, I mean, that's the depth limit in place, but like, it does, like, it's no use. Like, you can do that. You can use the latest version, which you can use. But in most cases, you don't need it. Like, I have no idea why you say Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I did write a factorial function just as a test, which calls from PHP to Lua to PHP to Lua at each, uh, to do each stage of the factorial calculation just as a test. And, and it didn't break too horribly when I asked it for the factorial of a, factorial of a billion. It just gave me an error message. So, so I, I kind of counted that as not doing too badly. Um, yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah, Lua has true tail calls, um, which have the. Uh, I don't know if anyone's. Uh, 
once that explained what how tail calls work, but uh, tail calls are, are just like a jump to another function without establishing a new stack frame. Um, okay. So the arguments that you get from a frame are already expanded. So um, if they had, you know, parser functions in those arguments, they'll be expanded to text already before uh, before Lua gets to look at them. No. No, there's no interface for that at the moment, no. Um, are all, all of them expanding or only when you request them? The, only when you request them. It, that's one of the reasons why that args table is not really a table, because it is actually lazy evaluated. So yeah, when you ask for an argument, it expands it. So it's much like how it's yeah. Um, so what you have to be careful about there is to not uh, construct preprocessor input from arguments, um, and uh, because then that'll double expand uh, the uh, the preprocessor input. You, if you start out with, like, do you know how you, if you have a double brace and then an exclamation mark and another double brace, right? That's that there's that exclamation mark template which returns a pipe. Um, if you um, had an argument that contained that, that would become a pipe to Lua. And then if you tried to preprocess that, that would then be a real pipe separating, uh, separating template calls, uh, template arguments. So um, to, uh, it, I mean, well, I, I'm, I, I think that people will probably do this anyway and maybe find useful things to do with it, but um, I don't really want to encourage it. So I'm saying that, that you shouldn't double expand your preprocessor arguments and uh, use expand template instead to avoid that. No, there's no escaping function and there's not really any theoretical way to escape uh, things in yeah, but that's not the same. It's it's not the same as as um, passing through a little literal character. Like, you can convert a pipe character to its HTML escape, which is what WF escape wiki text does. But that won't then separate table cells in the main pass of the parser. Right. So there's not really any way. Uh, like you can use that exclamation mark template, but that doesn't necessarily exist. Okay. So. I was thinking maybe you could just wrap the value so it's not straight yeah. on. Yeah, well maybe we could, but um and, and if there's there's some really good use cases for that then then we might look at that. But but uh, on my analysis at the moment I think expand template will answer most of those possible uses. No. No, you can't. Like so you having can't do no wiki argument slash no wiki. Which is that's commonly uh, not <coughs> if uh, if you have <coughs> let me just uh, write it here. So if you invoke is this what you mean to have some no wiki thing in an argument to hash and vote. If you do that, you'll actually get a strip marker in Lua. I don't want to do it here. I want to just execute. That text can be code. And then I want the module to get back the source. Say, OK, the first argument is not actually in the code. The first argument is text. I want to text regardless of what it is. Yeah, so you're thinking of, of having some sort of uh, some sort of preprocessor syntax here. Is that what you're thinking? Well, like, I, I, I like having a couple of. Here. I think it should be, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. And then getting that as string and not as. Yeah. Um, so the answer is that there's no way to do that at the moment, just because there's no parser interfaces. That, well, that's the main reason, really. There's no, there's no actual parser interfaces to, to get this as a plain string. Um, uh, yeah. The back, uh, yeah. 
in, it, it's theoretically possible to get the source wiki text of an argument, um, but there's, we can't actually do that at the moment without changing the parser. Um, just a little bit, just changing it, it. But so it's not, that's not a planned feature at the moment. So if, if you do really want it, then I'd like to hear your, your applications so that we can prioritize that. I want to show this wiki code Yeah, well you can use no wiki, okay? But then you don't get. Exactly, now I have to copy the whole thing again. And then if I change something, if I want to solve it, I want the table that has two columns, the left column is the weak column, and the right column is the right column. So I want the template for each row. Okay. And I want to show the, the, the code in the left, the result in the right. So now if I want to do that to any way to it now, I have to copy the same code and put it in no wiki once and then put it in the other one to get the other one without the wiki. Okay. And the input. So if I change something in the first, we then have to also change the same thing in the second bit if I want to So Yeah, possibly. Possibly, yeah. So if you if you pass into Lua uh, no wiki and you have some template. Um, yeah, then then we then move up to this language, yeah. Lua yeah, like um You'll get a strip marker into Lua, okay? Which, yeah. but we could pr perhaps provide an interface to let you get the text back out of a strip marker. Okay, that's that's not so difficult. So you, we can, you could pass in yeah. a no wiki okay. into. For me, as a template developer, that's okay. But for somebody who wants to use the end user, use it in an article or a web page, so they, that's. But more simplex that they have to put in for no reason at all. That makes it, makes it more positive for them. Okay, let's move on. So then, yeah. Um, there are a few other methods in, in the frame which are kind of aimed at, at future expansion. Um, there's a Wikitech L post about that uh, a few weeks ago. Um, get argument, new parser value, and new template parser value are, uh, they all return an object which can then later be expanded to wiki text. So uh, providing like a two step process to do the, the previous functions instead of a one step process. Um, they're all provided but they don't do anything that, that you can't already do with the other, um, the other methods that I've mentioned. Yeah, like, yeah, I did consider that, but like I said, there's there's no way to do that at the moment without some parser patches. So it's not actually. Yeah, that, that may be true. Where, um, yeah, there's no way to, to have objects and passed as arguments into, into a parser function at the moment. You could have some special, uh, some special string format. Like you could pass in JSON and then you could have, in Lua, you could have a JSON interpreter, right? Maybe, okay, um, maybe the template invocation comes from wiki text. It's almost that there's always a string. But with the 
Yeah, you can. Um, if it's from PHP, yes, you can. You can uh, pass in arrays. You can pass in, in pretty much whatever you want. Um, you can't. Yeah, I mean, you could extend the interfaces, but at the moment you can pass arrays that contain strings and, and numbers and, you know, the usual kinds of things, okay? Uh, and um, certain kinds of objects, possibly. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's, that is possible on the, the PHP level, on that underlying level. And uh, Lua can return all those things as well. So uh, can I just say that for the frame interface that we've got at the moment, the way that PHP passes a, a kind of frame object into Lua is that it has an object ID which is passed to Lua, which is just a string. And uh, then PHP has a table of, of objects. So that when it gets that string back, it knows which object that refers to. Okay? So yeah, you can, uh, that's, that's basically how we, we do objects at the moment. Does that make sense? Why do you have to do it, but I used to beginning Yeah, okay, well um, so this is a, this is the syntax that you this is how you create functions in Lua in in a mo, in the module namespace. And um, the first argument here is this um, frame object. Okay, so we're passing the a frame object into Lua from PHP, and then that has the certain properties, args and uh, argument pairs and whatnot. So yeah, the way that frame object works is that there's underlying that there's a string ID which is actually passed to PHP, and we have like a private interface on the Lua side which converts the object back to a string and, and passes that to, to PHP. So you could do the same thing with Wikidata. Um, we, we have a mechanism also to pass function values from Lua to PHP just by assigning them IDs and keeping a table of ID to function value mappings on the Lua side. Um, so we have, uh, oh, when you have an error, like a syntax error or something, then you'll see um, a red um, script error message. I'll just see if I can pull up one on. I actually removed them from, a, from here, but uh, it, it, I'll go to the history where there were a whole lot of script errors. Okay, so if you, if you do something wrong, then you get a script error like this. Um, and uh, when you click on it, it pops up this little dialog box. So I didn't want to have, like there's a lot of information there, I didn't want to have it all just straight into the wiki text source. So it, there's some JavaScript magic there. So you, when you click on it, it tells you what the full error, Lua error is. And there's a link to the, the responsible module. And when you click on that, it even takes you to the correct line, or at least it would if, <laughs> it, it would if code editor was installed on this wiki, which it isn't.
Yeah, I'd, li I'd really like to have a debugger. I think that's, that's really essential, and maybe a profiler as well. Yeah, that is true. That, that's how it all works anyway. That's how, how errors work in meta templates. So that's not fixed, that's true. Yeah, I'd like to have a little box at the bottom of the module page where you, where you could do like immediate evaluation of um, uh, Lua code in the context of the module. I'd like to have that. Yep. Yeah, possibly. Uh, uh, yeah, we can have a, a hidden category. Well, not on the error, but well, in the template, in the wrapper template, you probably want to avoid it. You can use hash if error if you want to suppress that. Yeah. Yeah, I kept the the HTML this uh, like compatible with hash if error, so that'll just work. Here we go. See, so strong class yeah. error, yeah. and you get a little, and yeah, <laughs> strong class error. So you know that that that'll trigger hash if error there, and then yeah. um, and then we've got script error, which is actually seen, and then you get uh, just as a debugging aid, you get the Lua error message in an, um, in an HTML comment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Victor's, there's no interface for that yet, but Victor is working on the interface for that. So we need the same functions that are available in templates, same functions of the same variable, so We'll give you the same bunch of what large bunch is. Well, like, we'll provide the basic of the like, yes, that are the page title. So, yeah. like, to the password, I basically add it to cover all the parser functions, like, it exists, and all magic words, like, page name. Okay. And then you get the same name. Uh, not really, like, same old. Not exactly the same, but they will be like logically designed, so. Uh, lo lo logic isn't necessarily better than this. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, Victor says he's going to post his proposed interface to Wikitecker, so there'll be, that's the best time for comments. Yeah, so, like, probably today. And uh, uh, if you want to have a counter proposal, that, that would be excellent. If you want to write down what you think the function names would be, that would be great. All right. Another question? Yeah, we don't have um, InterWiki or a, a, like a global uh, module repository just yet. We don't have that feature, but th that is planned. Um, well, it is possible to distribute modules with the, uh, the MediaWiki extension itself to have like files on a, in a directory. So if they're particularly popular modules, maybe we could distribute them that way. Um, when you do require, you can say require bit, or which will give you a module for, which is distributed with, with the Lua distribution. Or if you say require module, you know, foo, then that'll give you a, a, a module from the same wiki. And we'd imagine that we'd have some sort of syntax, perhaps similar to interwiki links, to give you a module from some other wiki. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we've done a few ad hoc uh, collections of that sort of information, um, and we intend on doing more in the next few months. Pretty much when I'm when I'm done with the Lua thing, and to, to the point where it can be beta tested, I'll be working on that sort of that sort of project. Yeah. Yeah, and that would help prioritize the uh, conversion to Lua, wouldn't it? Yeah. You could try on requires just any Absolutely. Possibly. I, I actually wrote one uh, very early in the development of this extension, um, which transforms wiki text code to, uh, to Lua. Um, that was not completed, but, but um, yeah, we could possibly complete that and, and have that available. Maybe even in, the, in its current form that might be useful. At, at the moment it, just, it kind of calls undefined functions when you use a, a, a parser function. Uh, or a template, um, and the code is not exactly pretty that it generates. It generates uh, code with random va random variable names added everywhere. So, yeah, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay.